Okay, guys, welcome to another episode of What's in the Night Sky, and this episode marks the two-year anniversary of Wit, and so thank you all so much for subscribing and joining along. I really didn't think the series would make it this far. Anyway, this month we have the winter constellations dominating the night sky. We have a supermoon, plenty of moon and planet approaches, with all five visible planets returning to the night sky this month, and also the zodiacal light becomes visible again. But first, a message from the sponsors of today's video, Skillshare. Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creatives where millions come together to take the next step in their creative journey. There are thousands of inspiring classes covering a huge range of creative topics such as graphic design, photography, videography, freelancing and more. I'm sure many of you watching this video will appreciate Ian Norman's class on nightscapes, an incredible introduction to all things landscape astrophotography, or how about James Manning's Astronomy for Starscapes which will help you make sense of the night sky and plan your astro photographs with ease. I've been using Skillshare for just over a year now and I've used it for all sorts of stuff. There are lots of good classes on freelancing and running a business and also Adobe Premiere classes that help me edit these videos. Premium members get access to all of those courses and you can try as many as you like and if you want to join along just follow the link in the video description and you get two months completely free of Skillshare Premium. Okay so for those of you in the northern hemisphere the winter constellations that make up the winter circle or the winter hexagon are dominating the southern skies now making themselves a little bit more westward. For those in the southern hemisphere these constellations will be dominating the northern skies and I've mentioned these in more detail in the past Witten's video so I won't go over it too much now. Those in the northern hemisphere are now counting down the days to the end of aurora season with only a couple of months left before the skies begin to brighten too much to catch the aurora. However, this month you should start to see the zodiacal light again. The triangular diffuse glow of light is caused by rocks and dust in the same plane as the planets and they reflect the sun's light back into the night sky. With the ecliptic now steep on the horizon you can see the triangular glow in the west after sunset for a couple of hours and it is a rather faint light so you want to make sure that there's no light pollution to the west of your location. Although it is a natural form of light pollution it does make for an interesting inclusion in a winter Milky Way panorama emanating from underneath the arch. Those in the southern hemisphere may be lucky to catch a glimpse of the Milky Way core returning this month so keep your eyes aimed towards the southeast just before sunrise. You guys get a little sneak peek of Milky Way core season before us here in the northern hemisphere. As for the planets this month, Venus continues to dominate the southwestern skies after sunset, brightening from last month's minus 4.1 to a magnitude now of minus 4.3. It sets around local 10pm, meaning it can still be seen in the night sky once twilight has finished. During the first half of the month, also keep an eye out for the other inferior planet, Mercury. It also joins Venus in the evening skies. You can find it just below Venus to the right, and it reaches greatest eastern elongation from the sun on February the 10th. This will be the best evening appearance of Mercury for this year, and it reaches a magnitude of minus 0.5 and sets at around 6.50pm local time. In the morning skies, Mars can be found on rising about 4.30 a.m. It's shining at a magnitude of about plus 1.2 and although it starts the month in Ophiuchus it moves slowly into Sagittarius by the end of the month. Jupiter is also in Sagittarius rising about an hour later at 5.30 a.m. but it's a lot brighter than Mars shining at a magnitude of minus 1.9. Towards the end of the month you may be able to spot another planet within Sagittarius as Saturn begins to rise at about 6 a.m. shining at a magnitude of about 0.6. Full moon this month falls on the 9th and it is a super moon, the first of a few in the next few months. On the 19th you can find the crescent moon between Mars and Jupiter in the morning skies and a day later the crescent moon is shared between Jupiter and Saturn, so a great photographic opportunity there. Towards the end of the month a slither of a crescent moon passes by the brilliant Venus. They're at their closest on the 27th but the 28th is also a pretty good opportunity to get a nice photograph of the pair together. As always, keep an eye on the app ISS Detector for any passes of the International Space Station in your area and of course SpaceX are launching 60 Starlink satellites every two weeks now so expect to see a train of 60 bright lights in the sky at some point and you can use the app Heavens Above to keep track of those and predict any sightings. 
And that's literally all I have for you this month, guys. It's a pretty uneventful month, but make the most of your time with the winter constellations as they'll soon be transitioning to the summer constellations and we'll be saying goodbye to the likes of Orion. Talking of which, Orion was the subject of last month's Witten's hashtag challenge. If you're new here, every month I set a target subject for people to photograph and then share the images to social media using the hashtag Witten's. I then pick my favourite three to share in next month's video here and also over on my Instagram account at Alan Wallace. So first up, I loved this image from PD Visuals with Orion staring down through a gap in the clouds and if I'm not mistaken, there's some gorgeous moonlight illuminating the foreground of this winter scene and also doing a good job of illuminating the clouds and making them look a bit more 3D. That's one of the great things about Orion is that even with the moon in the sky or some light pollution, you can still easily make out the main stars of the constellation. Secondly was this awesome deep space effort from Shadow Deer with some gorgeous colour and detail in the hydrogen alpha emissions of Barnard's Loop as well as the Flame and Horsehead Nebulae and of course the brilliant Orion Nebula. But I particularly loved the detail in the Witch Head Nebula just next to Rigel, the star that makes Orion's foot. Finally was this lovely winter scene from Jacob Sarna and again some stunning colour and detail in Orion and particularly the hydrogen alpha region around Mesa, otherwise known as Lambda Orionis, which is Orion's head. At the top of the frame you also have the beautiful Rosette Nebula as well, shining gorgeously pink from this Astro modified camera. I just love this sort of blend between the sort of classical wide angle landscape astrophotography and the sort of deep space tracking astrophotography. So great job there and great images all round. There really were some amazing entries to pick from this month so be sure to check out the hashtag Wittens. I love seeing your guys work from all around the world. The community around these monthly videos is just awesome and it makes it great fun for me to make them every month. So thank you all for subscribing and joining in with this love of the night sky. Anyway this month let's go with the zodiacal light. I tried zodiacal light during autumn but we only had one entry, however back then it was only visible in the pre-dawn hours whereas at this time of year it's visible just after sunset so hopefully you'll all have a better chance of catching some images this month. But let's see. And that is it guys, if you're going out to enjoy the night sky anytime soon, I wish you good luck and clear skies. Yeah.